Hello, and welcome back to Caffeinate Math. I'm Mrs. Saunders, and today's video is brought to you by Izmir, which was in Turkey. And we're gonna be flying around this area of the world today as we talk about algebra, specifically the history of algebra. I know, right? You're excited, aren't you? Maybe not. Have you ever seen this graph? This is how so many students feel about algebra. Let me tell you, you do use algebra in real life. I mean, it's real life that created algebra to begin with. For example, check out this situation. A farmer has two fields that together measure 1,800 square yards. From the first field, he harvested two thirds of a gallon of grain per square yard. From the second, he harvested half a gallon of grain per square yard. The first field gave him 500 more gallons than the second. What are the areas of each field? You can totally relate to that, right? Yeah, not so much. <laughs> but stay with me. This is a very important problem because it's the earliest recorded algebra problem. And when do you think this problem was written? I'll give you a few options. Was it written in 1650, 800, 900 BC, or 2000 BC? If you said 2000 BC, you are correct. So in order to begin the story of algebra, we have to go back in time more than 4,000 years to ancient Babylon. Shall we? So here we are in 2000 BC. Ancient Babylon is in this area here, or if I zoom in, you can see it better. And ancient Babylon was in what we call today the Fertile Crescent. And this is where a farmer was working his fields. So let's, let me bring that problem back. This is what I showed you before, but this is just a small part of this original. Check that out. It's the very first word problem, or at least it's the earliest one that we can find. And basically in this tablet, the farmer works himself through this field issue and he ends up solving these two equations. Although, he didn't have the benefit of this notation. He didn't use any symbols or any variables. So to get to symbols in algebra, we actually have to jump to about 400 AD. Let's go. Okay, we're in 400 AD, Alexandria, which is in the northern part of Egypt. And here we meet this dude, Diophantus. This guy was a genius and he advanced algebra in all kinds of ways. But for right now, just gonna highlight a few. He was the first mathematician to use symbols. He was also the first mathematician to accept fractions as numbers instead of only ever using just whole numbers. Okay, we have to jump again through time, and trust me, I'm skipping a lot. And we're gonna head to India in 800 AD. Welcome to India. And now I'd like to introduce you to this dude, Brahmagupta. Again, total genius, he did a ton, but two of his most important contributions were the rules for dealing with zero, which was a new concept back then, and the rules for dealing with negative numbers. Okay, now we're almost done. This time we're gonna fast forward only 20 years to 820 AD. And we're now in Baghdad where we meet this friendly fellow, Al Khwarizmi. And he wrote a book, there's a page of it, called, yeah, I'm not gonna attempt that. But if we translate it, his book was called <clears throat> The Compendious Book on Calculation by Completion and Balancing. Totally hit the bestseller list, went viral in the ancient math community, it was awesome. And why is this interesting? <laughs> because, check out this word, Aljaber. It should look, or at least sound, a bit familiar. Aljaber, and this book, is where we get our modern word algebra. And it means the restoration of broken parts. Isn't that cool? And now we've come a long way since then as well, but I'm gonna stop there in algebra's history because my main point is this. You may think that algebra was developed just to torture students in class. But it wasn't. 
Algebra developed over time to solve real world problems. And when you stop to think about it, it really is, it's just a cool process. You start with a real world problem, just like our farmer did. You translate that problem into symbols. You manipulate those symbols according to certain rules. And then the answer just appears. It's like magic, but it's math. Thanks for watching.